Thank you, Wendell, man. Don't understand, at 51 years old, and I think I had my, that happened to me when I, what was I, 49, whenever I did the Sins of the Father message. The, the reality of what was wrong with me, just because I decided to go deeper in the Lord, and his, he says he searches the deep things of the heart. There were things in me that I had no idea was there. And then he showed me things that I had done that had allowed those things in me. And so a Tom Thom wedding, they would bring you up at six years old and marry you to another six-year-old, a boy and a girl, and do a whole entire wedding with vows. And what happens behind the scenes is those vows are, it's a ritual. And so those two children are literally marked and chased by the enemy for the rest of their lives until they break the, uh, you know, denounce what happened. And I've had people, actors that were actors, actresses do weddings on TV, whatever. And they're, they're literally chased by that, by promiscuity and and all of those kinds of things because they opened themselves up and took a vow that they weren't aware of. And what ends up happening is because we have so many distractions in our society, we just go on with life. And we just put it somewhere. We good. We good. And we don't know where all of this sin is coming from. I was just telling one of the brothers, you know, Stranger Things is a television show, a show that comes on cable or whatever. And it's a, you know, very interesting show, kind of lays out the whole CERN and the upside down and different things. There's a character in there named Mike, and Mike got caught up in the upside down. And he, when he got caught up in the upside down, which was the parallel universe, he would just stand there. And in the parallel universe, there would be cords going inside of him from this entity that was manipulating him. But... In our realm, he would just be standing there frozen with his mouth open, right? They used to bring little boys up to the altar when I was doing the truth behind hip hop. And they would come up in that state like that. Just like that. Because they had been playing Dungeons and Dragons. And they had done rituals with Dungeons and Dragons and some other video games. Different things that they were playing with. They had done these rituals and they were trapped in a space between our realm and another realm. Just from playing a game. So we don't know. That's why we, that's why we did the prayer. The prayer for deliverance. Because you don't know. All you know is there's something I can't stop doing. Or there's a habit I have. Or there's something that just keeps coming back. Sometimes it comes back every week. Sometimes it's come back once a year. Whatever it is. And it seems like it's haunting me. But there's something you did. And only the power of God can show you that. And like Wendell said, he's 51 years old and finally found out God led him back just because of the prayer Wednesday. God led him back to the source of that old struggle that he, that he was dealing with. Yeah, and the devil will put you in a position to make you even more vulnerable and usually you're famous or he'll put you on a platform or in Wendell's case he was the quarterback of the of, of the team when I met him in uh, UNT and you know just he'll, he'll put you somewhere to work that sin in your life so you can corrupt more people and we're just sitting back taking it easy and just you know and we we're not even aware of the people that are affected by that just because we don't know what's going on inside of us. That's why when God called me to pastor and, I was, and, and, and we'll do truth behind him and everything, I've always been open before the Lord like that. And I, I've always wanted to know what's going on with me. I don't want nobody calling me and telling me, brother, the Lord told me to tell you. I want God to tell me. So I've always made sure I stay before God so he can tell me. And sometimes I got checked hard. By the Holy Ghost. And I wasn't ashamed. Every time, even, even here, every time it's happened, I've got up and told y'all. If I feel like I don't need to preach for a while, I, won't, I don't preach. Whatever I have to do because I want God to show me. I don't want to know. I, I, everybody know when they're wrong. I want to know why I'm wrong and why I keep being wrong. Amen? 
And I thank God, you know, he's given me the opportunity to meet a lot of, you know, celebrities and athletes and different ones. And I'm able to help them in this area. Uh, just, you know, behind the scenes, of course, I don't, you know, flaunt that or nothing. But I'm able to help them because God has shown me that there are some things that we're not aware of. That's been the basis of EX Ministries all along. There's just things that we aren't aware of that's going on that's causing this dysfunction in our lives. So we can't pacify the dysfunction. We can't just leave it there. Especially, and I, I you know, just like Wendell, he don't mind me saying this, but just breaking down, thinking of uh, Iman and his, 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 his daughters and, and his son and, and just break it because I feel him. Because I want to be able to protect my children as well. Isn't that why we're here? Isn't that why you're here, heroes? To stand in the doorway of your home and protect your family. But what kind of protector are you if you haven't fully dealt with what's wrong with you? Amen? I need 30 minutes to preach this message. I'm going to take as much time as I need. Forget that. Amen. I'm I'm, going to preach this message. Last hour deliverance. Because it's just, this came from the prayer from Wednesday night, y'all. The prayer was, it was deeper than you thought it was. It was deeper than you thought it was. I'm telling you, because, I mean, the day after the prayer, folk just start, man, when that folk just start manifesting around me, that's when I know we done tapped into something. Folks, you know, because you, and we need to quit saying, we need to quit calling stuff mental illness all the time. It's demons. The demons. Sometimes it's mental illness, but most of the time when you're dealing with church folks, you're dealing with some demons. And there's demons, they, they're demons that hate the fellowship and what we stand for and what you stand for. Adamantbeliever.com forward slash deliverance dot PDF. Obadiah 17 says, but upon Mount Zion shall be what? Deliverance. And there shall be what? Can't have holiness without deliverance. That's why there, he didn't say there shall be holiness and then deliverance. No, he said there shall be deliverance and then there shall be what? Holiness or wholeness. You're not whole unless you are delivered. And the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions quit praying for stuff and looking for stuff look for deliverance amen look for deliverance patterns and cycles of sin attempt to hinder us all is that true patterns and cycles I'm not talking about you just slipping up and doing something i'm talking about something that keeps coming back i mean can we just be real in here I need to turn the lights off. Okay, don't be looking at me squared now. Amen. Until you deal with it and stop it, it's going to keep coming back. And then after you deal with it and stop it, it's going to try to come back. Because it knows you. Patterns and cycles of sin attempt to hinder us all. There are things that we have done for years and years that even when we feel we have overcome it, will tempt us to fall. James 1 and 14 says, but every man is tempted when he is what? Drawn away of what? Whose lust? His, look at somebody say his own. It's your own lust. That's why he puts it in you. That's why he wants you to do the, 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 the ritual. That's why he wants you to play Dungeons and Dragons. That's why he wants you to do something to open yourself up. To put this in you so you will be tempted by what's already in you. Crack is not in me. You smoke that all around me. And it's just going to stink and I'm going to call you a crackhead. (laughs) Amen. And some of you, same thing. It's just certain things. Man, no, that's because it's not in you. But the person that's maybe a crack baby or grew up around crack or used to be on crack. That does a little something different to them. That's because it's their own lust. And so you are drawn away by what was put in you and enticed. The problem in most cases is that we do not understand spiritual warfare. Like, what are we talking about? Are we talking about 
the natural and not talking about the spiritual, but calling ourselves saved? I'm 51 years old now. I know that ain't old compared to some folks. That's old to me. I've earned the right to say that I'm, I'm 51. I'm growing salt and pepper out my face right now to show you I'm 51. And if you 30-something, you need to listen to me. Amen. And if you're 40-something, or if you're a member here. <laughs> if you're a member here, then you ain't got no choice. <laughs> But the problem is you don't understand spiritual warfare. Understand, listen, this is a spiritual battle. So because of my age now, I don't argue with folks. When I know that it's a spiritual battle. So while you're talking, I'm looking at the spirit behind it. So as you get older, the kid, you're my witness. As you get older, you don't have to argue and go back and forth like you used to. Because you begin to recognize what it is. And what you're talking to. This is a man with a problem. And his problem isn't with me. His problem is with the spirit that's in me. Our spirits aren't agreeing. Yeah. That's why everybody can't be here. Because my spirit's not going to agree. So uh, bump the long discussion. We can end this real quick. Our spirits are in opposition. That's spiritual warfare. When you dating and engaged, you better pay attention to the spiritual signals. When you get a job, you better look around and pay attention to the spirit realm. You'll get fired off of every job you've ever had because you weren't aware of the spirit realm. Kicking folks to the curb and oh, they just a jive turkey and other. Well, let's look behind it. Why does that happen everywhere you go? You're, you're, you're looking at the natural, bro. Why every marriage you've ever had failed? Why come there's drama every time you do something? No peace, nowhere. You're not looking at the spirit realm. In the natural, you look like a pretty cool brother. You're a pretty cool sister. But you can't get along with nobody. And every relationship, even the good, good ones that should have turned out into something good, can't turn out good. Because you're not aware of the spirit realm. Amen. Stay, we stay oblivious to the cause of these issues because we focus on repentance instead of what? Instead of what? Prevention. Yeah, repentance is good after you do something, but can we focus on prevention? Like, aren't you tired of that? Matthew 26 and 41 says, watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. It didn't say watch and pray in the temptation. So, you know, no, that you enter what? Not into temptation that's preventive watch and pray that you enter what that's preventive you're not walking blindly into this stuff somebody is trying to help you and stop you you can't hear them the spirit is willing but what Flesh is weak. Many times these things date back to our childhood or experiences when we were young. Devil tries, to, tries his best to get a struggle in us when we are young so that we will have issue with people. The Tom Thumb wedding is to give you an issue with people. Yeah, it's going to make the, the, the boy, if he marries at that age, it's going to turn on things in a six-year-old that shouldn't be turned on. You don't hug up and kiss somebody at six years old and stand there dressed. And, you don't do that. 
That's going to turn on something that shouldn't have been turned on. I know I'm preaching. But it's to put a struggle in you. Now you got a problem with people. You have a problem with people because you think folks are looking at you. See, when you're sneaking and creeping, you always think folks looking at you. I have folks emailing me all the time, brother. You know, well, your message, I know you was talking about me. No, no, bro. First of all, you are not that important. Second of all, you are not that important. And thirdly, you're not that important. I ain't got to get up here and talk about you, boy. You know how long I've been preaching. Go back and listen to the old messages and see, don't you hear the exact same stuff? I just, I just move it around. I've been saying the same thing for 30 years. For 30 years. The folks knew me from Sunday school at my old church. Wasn't I preaching the same thing? Same thing. Don't you dare think I'm talking about you. You are not that important. And you know what else? You are not that important. I mean, and then folks say that and you ain't even that important to your wife. She don't listen to you. I think I'm going to shoot a whole video about you. The devil tries his best to get a struggle in us when we're young, so we have a, we get an issue with people. So then you can't hear somebody trying to correct you. Yeah, because see, when you have issue with yourself and an inferiority complex, you like to level the playing field all the time. That's what a person with an inferiority complex, when they feel inferior, they, 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 I, man, I can't be around folks that I feel are above me. I got to bring them down to where I am. So they're always trying to level the playing field. Well, you know, I got to call a God too. See, that's a Korah spirit. That's what Dathan Abiram and Korah did to Moses. Yeah, God speaks through you. He can speak through us too. Level the playing field. And then when you're talking to them, yeah, they don't have no respect for the, for the, <laughs> and it's the crazy thing. They put you above them as their pastor, over them as their pastor, but they don't have respect for you like a pastor. So you just done cursed your life. I just sit back and let you do it. Just keep talking, bro. Keep, yeah. But that's an inferiority complex because of that sin that's in their lives and the way they've lived their lives and all the error and all the mistakes. They just feel bad and, and so they feel like they just got to pull you down to where they are in order to hear you. James 1 and 13, let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither he tempted any man. So the temptation ain't coming from God, I'm telling you. It's what the devil put in you. Making you want it. That's why when we do the, t uh, the, the deliverance prayer, you got to pray it. And get this junk out of your family, out of your home, out of your life. Once and for all. Only the power of God can examine our hearts. However, our lives will speak what? Our lives will speak louder than our words. Our actions, decisions, and current condition will usually prove that there is something in us that what? Needs to be addressed. And you, you know, folks get mad when you address it because they want to bring you down. So they start bringing up stuff you did. They start trying to level, just shift everything. Try to jerk because, you know, but dude, if you don't respect the call of God on my life to see what's going on with you then, Bro, we don't have nothing to talk about. Mark 4 and 9, and he said unto them, He that hath ears to hear, do what? If you got ears, but you don't, you can't just have ears. You got to have ears to do what? Ears. To hear. Everybody in here has ears, I hope. But, it, but you got to have ears to hear. Are we able to truly love others? Do issues and dysfunction always find us? Do we always end up in the same posture, praying the same, why me, Lord, prayer? If these things are going on in your life, chances are deliverance is needed. Hebrews 12 and 15, look, look in diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God. Lest any root of bitterness springing up troubles you, 
thereby many be defiled. So this is where those rituals, all those things you've done, all those things that you may have done that you're not aware of, they cause you to fail the grace of God. And you get an inferiority complex, and that springs a root of bitterness up in you. And then you become bitter. So when somebody tries to address it, you can't hear it and receive it. You get upset. You get mad. You don't want nobody messing with it. When in actuality, it's usually God trying to bring someone in your life that can speak truth to you so you can finally break that cycle. Sins that keep returning in our lives are signals that there is a problem with our understanding. You don't understand. If you did, you could stop it. It would end. You can't understand. There's something wrong with your understanding. We have not truly surrendered our full heart to God to allow him to make us understand. Now, you got to understand the reason why we prayed like we did on Wednesday. Those prayers, I don't just write random prayers. and that, No, I word it in a way where it's strategic. It's strategic. And it's speaking and it's using warfare terms so that you can go a level deeper in your prayers and begin to speak things that unlock things okay now lay me down to sleep it's not gonna dig into your past and pull up something might make you remember a teddy bear or something but it ain't gonna pull no we gotta go deeper so there are there are just terminology when we're dealing in that realm in that spirit realm there's just terms we have to use so we can get to that next level of understanding. A man that doesn't understand himself is dangerous. He's dangerous to himself and he's dangerous to those around him. He doesn't understand himself. So he makes decisions based on misunderstanding. Then when truth comes to try to help him, he pushes it away in anger because he has no understanding. He fights against the very words that could fix and help him. We have not truly surrendered our full heart to God. Ephesians 4 and 18 says, Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the what? You're in bad shape when your heart can't see. When your heart can no longer feel. When you can no longer feel that you are destroying people's lives and hurting people just to get what you want. Your heart is blind. You taking down folks. Destroying marriages. Destroying your own. You can't feel it. You don't care. It's a blind heart because your understanding is darkened. Oh, how many of you know anger is a bad counselor? Don't you listen to him. <laughs> Don't you listen to him. Many times because we are not aware of the why, we find ourselves overemphasizing the power of grace and not truly promoting the power of being set free. This is my struggle. This is just, it's my struggle. I'm going to have it to Jesus come. It's just my struggle. Quit saying that. Well, the grace of God is there. The grace of God is there. The Bible said you frustrate it. You mean God gets frustrated? Oh! You must have the little bitty skinny Bible with no Old Testament. <laughs> you missing a few books, bruh. Because in the Old Testament, God got, not only did he get frustrated, he just went to killing folk. Blowing stuff up. Out of frustration. You can frustrate his grace. He gets sick of you. Repenting of dead works all the time. But won't do nothing and change anything in your life. To fix the issue. Romans 6 and 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? I didn't even put the rest on that because you need to answer that. What's the answer? God forbid. 
good. Just because there's grace don't mean you can keep sinning. But here's the thing. You need to find out why you keep wanting to sin. There is something wrong. It's like you being allergic to popsicles and just keep eating them. That don't, that, that's not logical to me. Bro, what you got in your hand? Oh, a popsicle. Okay, the first three made you sick. And it didn't end well. Why do you have another one in your hand? Because I like them. But the devil wants us to pity ourselves and surround ourselves with people that make us feel better about our bad choices. Uh-oh. This is the big mama syndrome. Bad choices, bad decisions, and history of error. That's what they want for this country. They want everybody in power in this country to not care about your morality. Yeah, no moral judgment. Mm -mm. Yeah, you just, you know, surround yourself with people that will, oh, baby, it's all right. All your bad choices, your bad decisions. You see, and then it wasn't my fault, though. It was, I know. I know it wasn't your fault. You seem like people just keep trying. See, that's the devil. Devil after you because you got a call. And people just said that. Some surrounded yourself with some foolishness and you can't get better. Bad choices, bad decisions, and your history. You want somebody to just look at your history and just gloss over it. Bro, your history will tell me something. We then have no place at this point. If you hang around a bunch of folks that's pacifying you and, and, and rocking you in the bosom, then you have no place for the rebuke and the admonishment. You need to get better. Doesn't it take rebuke and admonishment to get better? When your child is acting a fool, do you just, well, that's okay, baby. You, another chance. And then the next chance, you're you, you going to get another one. And the next chance, they're going to keep doing it. Oh, but you pulled the strap out. Yeah. Baby, let me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me help you with this. Yeah. The, 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 the strap got a mind-changing anointing. It, it seeks the deep things like the Holy Ghost. It, 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 it seeks the deep things. Yeah, you need some admonishment. That's what brothers do here. We, we're admonishers here. Not that we all got it right and we all do it right. But, bro, we see you wilding. We're going to have some questions for you. Am I? Am I? He, uh, yeah. And then when you see it, I mean, and, and, and we just exchange it. We just all feed off each other. Because the Bible says iron sharpen iron. Now, if you're not iron, you're not going to be able to do that. And your feelings going to be hurt. Then you're going to think something's wrong with us. We then have no place for rebuke and admonishment. Proverbs 12 and 15. The way of a fool is right in his own eye. Have hey, you ever talked to somebody like that? It's just right in their eyes. And ain't, I mean, bruh, two plus two equals four. Let me get. And one, two, three. There's two here, then there's two here. Okay, so that's two things. And then this is two things here. And if I take these two things and put them over here with these two things, then it ends up being f f four things. No, it don't. Maybe let's use this. It's darker. You put that down, and there's two there, and then here's two. Mm -mm. I don't see it that way. But why don't you see it that way? Because, you know, I just don't see it that way. I just choose to see it different. You know, at that point, logic's gone. Like, there's nothing you can do. You, you, you've gone beyond the realm of understanding. There's nothing I can do for you. Yeah, that's a fool. Because it's right to him. Then he's going to go around and find all the people that that's right to, too. And it's not really right to him. It's just that it's against me. 
I know I just pre- it ain't right. It don't care if it's right, just long as the way of the fool is right in his own eyes. But he that hearkeneth unto what? Power of the Holy Ghost delivers us. You felt that, didn't you? Because I meant it. The power of the Holy Ghost delivers us, but strong leadership and sharp rebuke will keep us what? In line and what? Train us to make better choices and to what? If you think you're going to do this by yourself, did you raise yourself? So how can you raise yourself? You didn't raise yourself in the natural. You're going to raise yourself in the spirit? The Bible says in Hebrews 13 and 17, obey them that have what? Rule over you and submit yourselves for what do they do? As they must give an account. I have to give an account for watching for your soul. So if you don't want me watching for your soul (laughs) and not with grief, why are you making me mad? And irritating and making my tongue itch. I mean, dude, shut up. You don't know. You can't manage 500 people. You don't know. You're not the pastor. You don't know. Summary. The devil wants us all bound to sin and hating our lives because of it. And if there's anybody in your life that keep making you hate your life, it's the devil. The devil uses people. No one that practices sin enjoys life. It's a lie. It's easy to just be in sin. No, it's not. It costs a whole lot of money to be in sin whole lot of money. The juke joint is expensive. The club, you got to pay that. Then if you really wild it, you got to take tests all the time. And something wrong with you. Child support, all kind of different ways. <laughs> Sin, <laughs> that's a hard life. What did Annie say? It's a hard knock life for us. She's singing from an orphanage. That's why they have an orphanage. Because folks out there sinning. She was a prophet. Annie. Annie was prophesying. Instead of kisses, we get (laughs) kicked. No, Gerard rocking back and forth because he ain't. He ain't singing the Andy version. <laughs> he ain't never seen Andy. But no one that practices sin enjoys life. The world makes it look like sin is fun and being in darkness is the best way to live. Oh, it's not. How many of you know it's not? How many of your lives are better now that you're saved? Amen. How many of you got tired of... Oh, my goodness. Every time the phone rings. (laughs) Every text, bling, you ain't want to look at the phone. (laughs) All them codes you was getting, 911, 323, 789. You know they all meant something. <laughs> you just wildin'. The world hates their lives, but pretend to love. Y'all weren't gonna say nothing. I'm mad. Somebody's still on the 323. <laughs> Pastor, you don't know what that meant in my phone. <laughs> Shoot. I got the 323. <laughs> That was cold red. <laughs> but at the end of the day, 
The world, okay, let me start up. The world makes it look like sin is fun and being in darkness is the best way to live. But at the end of the day, those people are depressed, anxious, suicidal, and full of what? The world, that's, they're full of self-hatred. That's why they're so mad now because all their sins keep finding them. The world hates their lives but pretend to love living without God's rules and religion. You know, if you loved your life, you'd leave the church alone. What you mad at Jesus for? What you mad at the preacher for? If it's all good. Amen. This is why they hate the truth so much. The truth shows up the pain of the world and causes the appearance of bliss to be shattered. It shows the need for deliverance and freedom because the price of it is so great, they hate the idea of it. Those of us in the church should have the answer. But because we have embraced sin as well, the condition of our lives are not much different. Because the church has denied the fact that true deliverance from sin is necessary, we have weakened the message of freedom from sin. The world is fast losing all respect for Christians and are working hard to shut down God's church. We must allow the Holy Spirit to truly deliver us when? This last hour. We cannot just sit back and hope for the rapture of the church if our affections and actions are married to the world. How are you waiting on the rapture and you in love with the world? How are you waiting to go be, be with Jesus and you don't want to be with him now? If we are in love with the way we are, then we have no business in heaven. Thank you. Thank you. Start that clap up. We must forsake sin, allow God to show us ourselves, and forsake living for ourselves. In this last hour, we must pray earnestly for true deliverance from all sins. Non-expedient actions. Non-expedient actions are things you shouldn't do. It's not a sin, but you just shouldn't do it. What did Paul say? All things are lawful. But what? Not expedient. I mean, it don't have to be a sin. You just don't need to do it. And then also all deviant behaviors. That's when you deviate from what is right. God is coming back for a blameless and spotless bride. Deliverance from sin is not optional. It is what? Required. Everyone stand to your feet. We prayed this prayer on Wednesday, and we're going to pray it again in here today. After Wendell called me and told me what had happened, and some other people kind of told me the same thing. People were looking for the PDF or whatever. I just knew what God was going to do today. I knew today was going to be a message about deliverance, and I knew. And then once I saw folks around me manifesting like it always happens, and demons and devils and stuff jeering at you and just going, then you know. You've, you've tapped into something. The devil done got upset. Now it's time to just really make them mad because we're going to pray for deliverance for ourselves. We're going to pray for deliverance for this, for, from curses, from all of these things. We're going to do what we did Wednesday in here again. Is that all right? So I'm going to use this portion of the message for that. And it's important that you participate in this. And you know, one of the reasons the devil is using this COVID thing the way he is and keeping people from coming together is because as a unified fellowship, and I've told you this before, there's a special power in us uniting together and praying these things, okay? This is what he's afraid of. This is what the enemy is truly afraid of. Human bodies, not no digital images. Human bodies coming together. Coming together and unifying against the works of the enemy. And that's what we're going to do in here. All right? So everyone, just bow your heads. Matter of fact, everyone just bow your heads. Lift your hands up. Let's just lift our hands up. And right now, we are just, you know, this is a posture of surrender. Whatever it is, God, whatever it is, Father God, in us, whatever it is that is stopping our lives where they are, holding us in a certain spot, bookmarking it, 
just got us right there. We can't move from there. We can't get away from here. It just keeps bringing us back year after year. This same spot, same issue, same thing over and over. Just wrecking our family, our home, wrecking our lives. Just always messing up my fellowship. Always just in the way. Something keeps coming back. No matter how hard I pray, God, it just seems like it won't go away. Right now, God is going to show you what that is. The power of God is going to show you what that is. I prayed this morning that the power of the Holy Ghost would come and just bring revelation into your heart so that you can see what that is. First, we're going to pray for deliverance from generational curses. We do not have to be a victim of the errors of others. We are reborn, remade, and renewed by God's power. So right now we speak against all generational curses. If it came from a generation before us, if it came from a father or a mother, if it came from an action that went on in our home, in our family, whichever side of the family tree, right now we pray against it right now. We don't have to be victims of the errors of others because we are reborn, remade, renewed by God's power. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, therefore if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. I claim new creature status right now. You have to do this for yourself. So you need to do this for yourself right now. Whether you need to stand on your knees, however you need to get, you need to do this right now. You need to claim your new creation. New creation status. Believing that all things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. I'm not that guy. I'm not that girl. I'm not subject to that. I don't have to keep living in that. I don't have to keep dealing with that. That's not going to keep being my story. That's not going to end me. That's not going to stop God. That's not going to stop his plan. I am a new creation. And I claim it right now. All gener generational curses must go in the name of Jesus. And I pray deliverance right now from all illicit ties. Whether it was a Tom Thumb wedding, whether it was a, a, a ritual that was performed over me. Somebody may have... Uh, created a tie between me and someone else. whatever it is we break every tie every cord every channel or attachment that the enemy is using to bind us to others in our past we sever it right now all ties to others that are unsanctioned by God every illicit relationship every illicit union everything we've done whether it was human whether it was digital whatever it was we break it and bind it right now and sever it First Corinthians 6 and 16. What know ye not that which is joined to a harlot is one body. So we break all one body unions that are illicit, that are not sanctioned of God right now. Whether it was a pledge, whether it was something we said, whether it was an action, whatever it is, we break it right now. And we pray deliverance right now from habitual sins. We counsel all habits, practices, patterns, routines, and most importantly, proneness to commit sins that are familiar to us. We break proneness right now. We are not prone to do the same thing over and over. We will not walk in that kind of bondage. We will be free right now and walk in the newness of the power of God right now. No matter how long it's been, an issue, or, no matter how long it's been an issue or has come back to us, we claim our deliverance and we walk in it from this day forward. 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. There have no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. You can handle this. You can deal with this. This will not overtake you. This will not keep coming back. In the name of Jesus, we exercise that power right now. And we pray right now for deliverance from sins of omission. We bind the spirit of slothfulness, depression, anxiety, lack of fortitude, passion, lack of passion and endurance. That passion for God, that passion for his way, that passion to do things his way. That slothfulness where we are spiritually lazy and we won't pray it through. We won't take the time. We are committing sins of omission. Leaving God's plan out because we won't invest the spiritual time it takes. Proverbs 12 and 25. But first we claim deliverance from passivity and not acting on God's commands. Anxiety in a man's heart weighs him down. We pray against depression and anxiety right now from not doing things the way we should have. 
God, forgive us for asking for things without getting close to you. Forgive us, Lord, for asking for things and not doing things your way. Forgive us for asking for things and being insubordinate to your message. And we pray right now for deliverance from expedient actions. We break the power of the crouching sin. The sin that was crouching to pounce on Cain. Those sins that sit back and wait for us to do the wrong thing. We speak against that right now. Sins that lie in wait because of non-sinful choices that are lawful but not expedient. All actions that will lead to future issues, sin and offenses. Just because it's not sin doesn't mean it's good to do. 1 Corinthians 10 and 23, all things are lawful for me. But things are not, all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things do not edify. So right now, God, help us, Father God. Lead us and guide us to make better choices that don't lead us down a path of temptation. Don't lead us down a path of destruction. Don't lead us down a path of harm. And we pray for deliverance from witchcraft, spells, astral projection, voodoo, diviners, all unclean things. We denounce all rituals, rites, pledges, communions, or fellowship with dark forces and spiritual wickedness. Some of us hands were laid on us. The wrong hands. We pray against those powers right now. We pray against the powers of earthiness. Consciousness. All of the witchcraft and different things that are going around now. Father God, we pray for deliverance from it. There are no rights to us. No pledges. Communions or fellowship with dark forces and spiritual wickedness. We cancel every instance of uniting with the enemy in any way. We belong to you, God, and his son has set us free. John 8 and 36 says, if the son therefore make you free, ye shall be free in. So now just thank God for his freedom right now. Thank you, Lord, for freedom. Thank you, Lord, for freedom. No matter how long it's been, no matter how long it was, no matter how much it's tempted you, whatever, it's gone now. Thank you, Lord, for freedom. Freedom in Jesus' name. Listen, 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 listen. And I'm, I'm closing with this, but listen. We, you just don't understand. Some of us don't understand how serious this is. This stuff will stop you from multiplying. As a couple, they'll stop children by something somebody did that you weren't aware of. Stop you from getting a husband. Stop you from getting a wife by just something someone did. You have to be knowledgeable of what's going on inside so your prayer should be that the holy ghost power of god will search the deep things in your heart and reveal to you what it is so you can break the power of it once and for all amen amen come on and give god some praise hallelujah you may be seated